Hey guys, it's Chris, and they finally dropped a damn Season 7 trailer for Game of Thrones. I'm very, very hyped about it. This is a badass trailer, so let's break this damn thing down. I'm going to watch it with you guys, just like I did before, and so we can pause it frame by frame and try to speculate on what the hell is going on. So I guess a potential spoiler warning, although this is going to be just speculation, but this is a badass trailer. I'm super hyped about it, so let's jump right in. Dracarys. Alright, so let's start this damn thing up and see what we got going on. Enemies to the east. Enemies to the west. Alright, so first off, really quickly, we got Cersei walking in King's Landing. And of course, she is starting to say enemies to the east, enemies to the west. And she's going to continue to say north and south as she walks into some courtyard in King's Landing. And of course, as she starts to call off enemies in various directions, we see a picture of Grey Worm there, of course, being her enemy because Danny is now in Westeros. And we also start to see the map here on the table. Now, this is not at King's Landing. This map is actually going to be on Dragonstone. This is the table map that you saw Stannis kind of hanging around a lot in the earlier seasons. And this is the actual map that Aegon the Conqueror, and of course, Danny's ancestor, he had this map carved at Dragonstone when he was about to take the Seven Kingdoms. So this is on Dragonstone. And what's really interesting here is you can see the direction already they're heading with this map. The camera is panning from south to north, where the true threat's coming from. Enemies to the south. Enemies to the north. And as Cersei finishes up her little diatribe here about her enemies, it does stop at Castle Black. So you do see that the camera is in fact going from south to north and it stops here and you see the wall here in Castle Black on this map here. And then the fire in the background as is to say, that's where the true threat's coming from. She's talking about her various enemies throughout the Seven Kingdoms as in the various houses, but the map here is showing us where the real war is coming from. And of course, she's not really aware of that yet and she probably doesn't give a damn or believe it anyway. And then we have a shot here of Arya when she says enemies to the north. Now this is Arya here on her way probably to the north. It looks like in this shot here just based off the location here, the trees and stuff in the background and there's not a lot of snow here yet, that she's still relatively far in the south, perhaps somewhere around the Riverlands area after she leaves the Twins, perhaps headed to River Run as she heads towards Winterfell because we know she will arrive in Winterfell at some point during Season 7. There's also kind of a glare here on the screen like if somebody's watching her outside of a window. So perhaps she's on her way to Winterfell and she stops by the inn to see old Hot Pie again to get her some of that good old Hot Pie bread. And of course, you never give up on the gravy. Whatever stands in our way. Now here we see Jamie and Cersei in King's Landing as she continues her diatribe about her enemies. And it looks like she sent Jamie out to the store to pick up a Westeros Game of Thrones version of Twister because she has a giant ass map she's standing on here. And this looks like to be some courtyard in King's Landing. And look where she's standing. She's standing right here on the neck looking north where the true threat's coming from. Now of course again she doesn't know that. But Jamie's standing there beside her kind of listening. And of course they're not broken up quite yet like they are in the books. But he's going to get there very, very quickly. And you can quickly see the theme here throughout this trailer of all the people looking at their various maps and planning their strategies. And it's probably just me, but she's standing right there on the neck where Grey Rotter Watch is, where Hallen Reed's from. But in all seriousness, looking at this map here, I was like, what the hell is that? Because this didn't look like the Westerosi map. It looked like there was some land up there as far as some wintry style land up there to the top left-hand corner of the map. But if you look really close here, you can see that she's had this map recently painted so it's just not complete yet. You can see where the letters are not quite painted there. So that big white spot's in the top left-hand corner of this map that Cersei's standing on. So it looks like that's just a floor underneath it. You can see the paint cans there and the little maps where she's having somebody paint this map of Westeros, I guess, to be her war room. We will defeat it. So Cersei says we will defeat it. And of course, she's uh, just probably talking a little shit here because she knows she's basically backed in a corner. But we see these Lannister soldiers here and she's changed up everything. You know, she came into power now, apparently in King's Landing and spruced things up a bit, although supposedly she's broke because the gold mines went dry. But she's changed everything. The Lannisters look a hell of a lot different than they did before. They've always had the best looking armor, I think, of all the Seven Kingdoms. But now it's really spruced up with these new Lannister shields. We're the last Lannisters. Okay, she's saying we're the last Lannisters here and she is in the throne room with Jamie. This is something very formal. And she looks pretty pissed off here and she picks her hand up off the throne here like she wants to damn choke the shit out of somebody. So I'm going to guess this is the first time Euron comes in and brings the Sand Snakes who are responsible for her daughter's death. She looks like she wants to choke the shit out of somebody right there on the spot. The last ones you count. 
And of course, he says the last ones who count as it goes to Tyrion. Now, this is going to be near Dragonstone here. We see the dragons fly up, and they are fucking huge. We saw that from the previous picture yesterday that got released. But anyway, you can see here in this shot that this is near Dragonstone, probably right after they arrived, because Tyrion's walking out to the cliffs here. This looks very much like the area of Dragonstone. You can see the castle off to the right before it panned over and these big-ass dragons flying up. And you gotta remember here in history, this is where Aegon the Conqueror started his campaign to take over Westeros, and there are always dragons hanging out there, so there's various layers and stuff around Dragonstone, at least in the books, and that's what Tyrion's witnessing here. All right, now we have a shot of Danny opening the gates of Dragonstone for the first time. Obviously, if there's any Baratheon leftovers, they've already taken care of that threat, or at least talked them down, or what have you. So this is likely her laying eyes on Dragonstone for the first time. Obviously, this is Dragonstone by the architecture. You can see the dragon statue here as they open the doors. But the really cool thing here is she was born here, but she never really got to set foot in Westeros because she was carried off immediately after she was born. So she literally never touched the ground in Westeros because she was probably carried to a ship pretty immediately after she was born and killed her mother during the Great Storm of Westeros, hence the name Daenerys Stormborn, and taken over to Essos. So she is literally seeing her home for the first time that she can remember. I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms. And here this shot kind of confirms that. She is actually leaning down and touching the beach of Dragonstone where her ancestor Aegon I first conquered Westeros and first touched down as well. So this is definitely a repeat of history as she's telling us she was born to rule Westeros. And of course, again, this was the place she was born, literally at Dragonstone before she was carried off across the Narrow Sea. So this has got to be pretty damn cool and emotional for her at the same time to actually be back home where she came from after all these years of going through what she's been through, being sold off to Khal Drogo, learning about slavery, taking over and freeing the cities in Essos, and finally looking towards Westeros and finally landing after all this time. So this has got to be a pretty special and emotional moment for her. And I will. Okay, so we have a shot of Danny right after this, of course, sitting on her throne at Dragonstone as she probably plans her invasion. So this is where she's going to be ruling from for a while, at least until she plans to get to King's Landing to sit the actual Iron Throne. We'll see if that ever happens, but you can see here, this is obviously Dragonstone. This is her throne there, and it looks like the guy to the right of her standing beside her is a Dothraki blood rider, perhaps, just standing guard. Now, this next shot is really, really cool because we have the Unsullied breaking down the doors of Castle Rock. That's right, they're going straight after Cersei's home, and this was probably due to Tyrion telling her that. We did hear Dario tell Danny last year before she said, you know, you're staying over here in Marine, you're not coming with me, motherfucker. You're staying here to keep the peace. We did hear him say to her, they're going to basically shit their pants when we come rolling up on Castle Rock. The only thing I don't dig about this shot here is the Lannisters look cheap. I said this before in some of the photos that were released. You just have these little painted lions here and a little ale on the wall and all that good stuff. Castle Rock is supposed to be rich. I mean, they should have statues and shit everywhere. And this looks kind of cheap, you know, for Tywin Lannister. You'd think they'd, you know, spruce up the place a bit. And this is what Rob should have done a long, long time ago before he made the mistake of marrying Talisa. He should have went to take Tywin Lannister's home, Castle Rock, and would have had an entirely different story. Your father and brothers are gone. All right, so we had a shot here from what looks to be last year. Maybe this is another meeting here this year before John leaves but that was the King in the North line from last year when he was proclaimed King in the North, obviously, and Lyanna Mormont gave her epic speech to everyone about, you didn't answer the damn call, but we were here, John's my king, all that good stuff. And then of course we have Littlefinger already whispering in Sansa's ear right here about your brothers are gone, your father's gone, and here you stand and you're the best chance against the wars to come. The question is, is he referring to the actual wars to come as in the White Walkers, or is he referring to the Lannisters war or something like that? because he doesn't give a damn about White Walkers and, and the Night King. He probably don't believe anything John said, and that's going to be his downfall, I'm sure. But he's definitely trying to turn Sansa against John here and make her turn on John, as in, you're the trueborn Stark, he's the bastard, you should take power here. Although I think he knows differently. And here you stand. All right, so we had a shot here of Castle Black again. Looks like the gate was raising up to go north. So perhaps that's Castle Black, perhaps that's East Watch by the Sea, but it looked like the same gate at Castle Black. I wouldn't imagine they'll do any other locations since they're kind of wrapping this thing up. So this is probably going to be when they head up north to go on this so-called mission to prove to Danny that there are these evil ice demons coming down from the north. And then we go over to a shot of Theon here, and Theon looks pretty distraught here. I think this is going to be a sea battle, and I think this is going to be where Yara gets captured. Other than that, it's really hard to tell as far as this shot goes, but I think one of the next shots will give us a clue. Hope against the coming storm. 
And I really, really love this. We have Melisandre here all the way in the south at Dragonstone, and she is looking down on Danny and them going up the steps of Dragonstone here. So I think this is very, very cool because she likely knows something about Danny and her dragons now. And this is what I was saying before. I wanted Kenvara to come with Danny across the Narrow Sea so she can meet Melisandre and hear their two different takes on the prince that was promised because obviously Melisandre thinks it's John. He did come back to life for some reason or another. And of course, Danny fits the prophecy literally, and she woke dragons from stone. She literally has fire made flesh, so to speak. So I think it would be very, very cool to see Melisandre join Danny's camp, at least in the sense of kind of getting these two together and maybe helping bridge that gap a little bit when John heads to Dragonstone. All right, now we have a shot here, and this looks to be north of the wall for sure. You got the mountains in the background, there's snow everywhere, and they're wrapped up tight like wildlings as far as their clothing. So this is probably the party that heads up north that's going to try to go prove to Danny in some way that this thread is real and the White Walkers are real. And this is probably going to be the group of John, Tormund, Jorah, and the whole group we talked about before in filming news. And they're definitely running from something here, so whatever's behind that camera as far as the angle goes, it can't be good. And now we have a shot of Arya here. Now, obviously, in this particular scene, she is a lot further north. There's a lot more snow on the ground. And we see the emphasis on her breath here and how cold it is. And she's building a fire here, probably as she heads north. So now she's probably getting pretty close to Winterfell at this point. And you got to remember, Arya is fairly young, so she's never really experienced a winter. Now, on the show, she probably has when she was very, very young, so she probably don't remember it. She was probably a baby wrapped up inside all the time and never really experienced a true winter because the summer here has lasted about 10 years. And in the books, everybody's a lot younger. So Arya has really never experienced a winter time. So she don't really know what cold is. If we don't put a sign on. And, and now, of course, we see a shot here of the same group I think we just saw running from something, probably obviously White Walkers and Whites. And they're obviously going to perform here what's called the circle jerk technique as the Whites and White Walkers surround them and all looks hopelessly lost. Unbound together, we will die. And of course, during this scene, we hear Davos telling somebody, if we don't band together, it doesn't matter who sits the Iron Throne, basically. And I think that's what he's referring to here. So I'm going to guess that that speech that Davos is giving, he's probably talking to Danny for the first time when John and Davos head to Dragonstone to meet her for the first time and tell her what's up. And then we have a quick shot of Littlefinger here looking all schemy. I'm not sure exactly where he's at. Obviously, it's Winterfell because I don't think he's going to leave there for a while. As a matter of fact, I don't think he's going to leave there alive. But the point being here, I'm not really sure. This could be the crypts because we do have another shot here in a few seconds with John and Littlefinger in the crypts. So I'd imagine John's already down there at this point, going to say his goodbyes to Ned, not knowing he's standing right beside his mother's crypt. And Littlefinger's going to go down there and say something to him and try to get him turned to get Sansa. And we'll see how John takes it. And this next shot here, we see the Dothraki riding into battle, the Blood Riders, and they are jumping off their horses. They don't give a fuck. They're just going to kill all her enemies in their metal suits, as they said last season. So this is probably going to be the battle of High Garden or shortly after High Garden. I do think the Lannisters will make a move on High Garden and take it over. And Danny may or may not stop that, but I think she will meet them in the open field during that battle or after that battle and attack the Lannisters there as well, at the same time taking down Castle Rock from the other side. And this is the shot I was referring to here. This is obviously going to be a sea battle. We see somebody boarding a ship here. So this is likely going to be Euron here in his ship Silence, which we did see a quick shot of earlier on in the trailer when Cersei was talking about her enemies in the north, south, east, and west. So I think this is the point here where Euron attacks the Greyjoy fleet, Yara and Theon are on, and this is probably what Theon was seeing earlier as far as the fire and the damage. We saw the embers floating around him. And I'm going to guess here that this is where Yara gets captured by Euron and taken to King's Landing later on. Matter whose skeleton sits on the eye. And of course we hear the continuation of Davos talking to somebody, I'm assuming going to be Danny. It doesn't matter whose skeleton sits the Iron Throne. As we go to a shot of Danny looking over the exact same table we saw earlier that Aegon the Conqueror planned his conquest with. And so she's looking at all her options here, laying out her strategy. And you can see Tyrion here in the same shot advising her and this may be the point where Tyrion says okay don't make any moves yet just send out ravens to everybody and let them know you're here because i think you have overwhelming odds with your three fucking dragons because i think Tyrion's always going to keep her level-headed you know keep her from going mad queen style like her father so i think Tyrion's always going to kind of push for diplomacy first we see a quick shot of zombie mountain in the new armor we did see this new queen's guard armor that cersei's come up with from previous photos again once since she's taken power She's really spruced up the damn place. She's got new armor for the Queen's Guard. She's got new armor and shields and shit for the Lannister army. She's really into fashion here, being the new Mad Queen. And I gotta say, if there was a fashion show between all the various houses of Westeros, she'd win by a landslide. 
And now we have a shot here of a couple people running with a torch and I'm really struggling to see who this is and where this is. So I'm not really sure about this one. This could be related to Gendry and Davos in King's Landing when they go get Gendry out because I do think they'll get Gendry out of King's Landing. Danny needs that political alliance and I think Gendry will be elevated to Lord of Storm's End even though he's a bastard. He is the last remaining bastard of Robert Baratheon and she needs those political alliances so it could have something to do with that. But it's really hard to tell here. This, this shot is really, really dark. That's why I'm thinking King's Landing because you know Tyrion and Varys know all the secret passages in King's Landing and they may very well use those to go in and get Gendry out undetected. But at the same time, as I look at this shot even more, this kind of looks to be like Jon holding the torch here and Brienne behind him. So I really don't know what's going on here and when and where this would be, but it's hard to say who that is in the front, but that definitely looks like Brienne in the back. So if that's the case, this could be somewhere in Winterfell, something going on at night, and Brienne and Jon are rushing to see what the hell's going on. Perhaps this is before Jon heads off south to find Danny and something goes on at Winterfell and they're going to investigate. It's just really hard to tell what this scene is, but it looks like that is Brienne in the scene rushing toward the scene of some kind of damn crime. And this next shot here in the crypts are really, really interesting here. You have Littlefinger and Jon in the crypts, and this is going to kind of be a repeat of history here where Ned slammed Littlefinger against the damn wall and choked the damn shit out of him when he was at the brothel back in King's Landing. And he says something to Jon here, probably trying to get to him about Sansa, trying to turn Sansa and Jon against each other. And Jon ain't having none of it and slams his ass up against the wall, choking the shit out of him just like Ned did. So whatever he says here, Jon doesn't like it at all. I'm not sure if Littlefinger knows the thing about his parents. He definitely knows Rhaegar didn't kidnap Lyanna and rape her because we got that shot from season 5 where him and Sansa were in the crypts before he left her there with Ramsay Bolton. And Sansa said, you know, Rhaegar chose my aunt but then kidnapped her and raped her. And he knew right then that that was bullshit, so it may have something to do with that. So it's hard to tell what he's saying here, but I'm going to guess since I don't think Jon finds out about his parents so soon in season 7, more likely a season eight thing, I'm thinking. So I would think here that Littlefinger is saying something to John about Sansa. And he ain't trying to hear none of that. And then we have a couple more shots of Castle Rock being taken over and sieged by the Unsullied. And it looks like they're doing a pretty damn good job. So it looks like Castle Rock is going to be taken over here by Danny, and that's going to piss Cersei off. And again, I'm looking at this shot here with the Lannister sigils on the wall, and it looks fairly cheap. You would think they would have bigger sigils hanging down the wall or some kind of big carvings and statues and shit, but those are just tiny little sigils like, Tywin Lannister was a cheap bastard. I think Cersei needs to take her ass up to Casterly Rock with some of those decorating skills. Now we have a lot of little different shots here very, very quickly, so let's try to get through these. First, we have Arya looking under something. I'm assuming here she's back in Winterfell at this point, looking under her own bed back in her old room, you know, going through things, you know, probably remembering when she was a kid, when she was happy. So she's fully embracing her Stark identity here, I think, back at Winterfell. Otherwise, she wouldn't go in the first place. She'd just continue her killing spree and probably try to head to King's Landing. Not that that couldn't happen as well, but I'm not sure what Arya's looking for here. Maybe she's just paranoid. Perhaps she's looking for, you know, the way for something because she was so paranoid about her chasing her throughout Bravos. But anyway, I would guess here, just based off the character, that Arya's probably back reminiscing a little bit, looking through her old room. Maybe she's looking for something back in her old room that she lost or hid years and years ago. And then we have a shot of Jorah's arm coming out of some kind of door here with his grayscale. Now, if you look closely here at his arm, it doesn't look like normal grayscale. Obviously, it's gotten a lot worse. But this almost reminds me of the Victarion thing in the books where his arm gets healed by Makoro, the red priest, who burns the shit out of his arm, but heals him and saves his life. So I'm going to guess here this is at the Citadel where he's, he's in some kind of quarantine and this is where Sam will help him cure his grayscale. He's sticking his arm through this little doorway so otherwise he can't be touched like he's in some kind of quarantine. But this may be the procedure itself we're about to see or we've just seen it because that looks like he's got some flesh and shit melting off his hand. And if you think back to season five when Jorah and Tyrion were going through Old Valyria, the stone men they encountered didn't look anything like that as far as their arms go. It looks like he's got some flesh hanging off his fingers here. So this may be the actual procedure where I'm assuming Sam helps him cure his gray cell at the Citadel. You have more Dothraki in the open field. And then we have a quick shot here of Tormund and Jon and some others up north of the wall, I believe, running again. This is probably from the same sequence we just saw a minute ago where they're running for some White Walkers and Whites. Obviously, they're north of the wall here, and Jon has this kind of wilding garb on again because it's very, very cold. 
and got these heavy furs on. It's hard to see who that is across the screen there running as well, but we know this party is going to consist of John, Tormin, Gendry, Davos, etc. So it may be Gendry running over there. It's really hard to tell, but they're definitely running away from something here, not to something. And we know the only thing they could be running from up there north of the wall is the Night King and his minions. We have a quick shot of Grey Worm and Masande kind of, uh, you know, getting down to business here. Not sure exactly how they're going to do that. You know, there, there's a few things they could, you know, do to be intimate with each other. You know, Grey Worm may have a, you know, a late night meal or something like that. But they'll definitely cuddle. I mean, I can see that. They'll definitely do some cuddling. And of course, in our next shot, true to Game of Thrones fashion, we have the mandatory girl on girl scene. And this is going to be Yara and Illyria Sand here, probably before they die. And this may be in the dungeons at King's Landing. We really don't know. Although there is obviously a candle or a torch nearby because we can't see their faces. And in the black cells, they don't allow anything in there. That's why they're called the damn black cells because there's no light in there whatsoever. So if I had to guess here, I would say this is probably before they get captured, likely on their ship still, because we know as Danny headed back to Westeros last season, she was joined by the other fleets, including the Martells. So I'm sure Alaria and Yara have a lot to talk about. And then we have a quick shot here of Danny back at Dragonstone at the table again, the Aegon carved, knocking over the Lannister line. This is probably representing the attack on Casterly Rock. Maybe perhaps she's already got the news it was already taken because she is knocking the line over. And I would assume with people like Tyrion there being smart commanders, they wouldn't be knocking over the line symbolically. At this point, Casterly Rock has probably already been taken and secured a victory. And then next we have a quick shot of what looks to be the sea battle here going on, probably between the Greyjoy fleets, Euron, and Yara, and Theon. And this is probably going to be Theon saving somebody, perhaps Yara. Perhaps he saves her life by diving overboard because we do see the flames explode over them after they get under the water. So this is probably where Theon actually saves somebody, but I do think Yara is going to get captured. And I think Theon may or may not be responsible for that. But he did look like he may have saved her life before that happens, even if she does get captured. But it's really hard to see who this is, but obviously it's somebody of consequence. It's not going to be some random soldier necessarily in a trailer. So I do think that's Theon on the right side, but it's just really hard to see who that is on the left. But this is likely going to be during the sea battle here when they meet up with Euron and his ship Silence. And that is a badass scene. All the Dothraki horde, you know, traveling across Westeros. This looks to be in the south, somewhere near the Riverlands, something like that, because obviously there's no snow there. It's still sunny. And they're wearing their normal Dothraki stuff, not like they're wrapped up in any kind of furs. And we see Drogon's big ass flying across the field. We're going to see a Field of Fire 2.0. For those of you who don't know, the Field of Fire was something that happened in the history in the books where Aegon the Conqueror burned a lot of people alive in one day with all three dragons at one time, which was very unusual. As a matter of fact, that was the only time he used all three dragons in the same place. But this is going to be the Field of Fire 2.0 as they attack the Lannisters here, I assume. But can you imagine being on the battlefield, being one of these Lannister people or whoever it's going to be, and looking up and seeing a giant-ass dragon coming your way, or three for that matter, if that's the case? Because these people have all heard about dragons, but the last dragon died around 150 years ago, supposedly. So a lot of people probably think they're myths, kind of like Jor did early in Season 1 when he told Danny, have you ever actually seen a dragon? So a lot of people probably really don't believe they existed, even though they're in stories and legends of Westeros and Aegon and all that good stuff. So they probably believe they used to be real, but didn't think they'd ever see them again or ever see one in their lifetime. Could you imagine the look on their faces when they see that big-ass dragon coming towards them on the battlefield? They're definitely going to shit their breeches, and probably run the other way or say, yeah, yeah, I think I'll just join, I think I'll just join her. And then of course you hear John say the Great War is here. So this is probably going to be when he's talking to Danny when he first gets to Dragonstone and meets her for the first time. And she's going to say, look, I want you to bend the knee. You can keep your titles in the North, just like my ancestor did to your ancestor. And you can damn not fight and everything will be okay. And you can keep Winterfell and be Warden of the North, all that good stuff, yada, yada, yada. And John's going to say, Hell no, I'm not bending the knee. Look, this is what's going on. So I think this is going to be the conversation that him and Davos had with Danny, And that's probably where we heard Davos speaking as well. So anyway, guys, that's all I have. I am super fucking hyped about this trailer. I knew it was coming. I felt it was coming. And then, of course, they removed the other previous long walk teaser from the HBO YouTube channel. So when that happened and then they started dropping these pictures, as well as the Season 7 poster yesterday that was actually animated with the Night King eye. And you saw John and I believe Danny as well in his eye reflection before it faded off too far away. 
I knew it was coming soon, and I'm damn sure glad it happened because, damn, we've been waiting on this. We only have about a month and a half to go, so I'm really, really super excited about it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I think I pretty much hit everything there. I don't think there was too much hidden imagery or anything like that hidden in this trailer. I think the overall theme of this trailer is pretty obvious. Everybody's looking at their map, so this is kind of the war for Westeros. That includes the Night King as well, and all the people down south, including Danny at this point, doesn't know about the real threat to come from up north, and that's why you saw in that map shot of the wooden table when Cersei was doing her voiceover, the map was going from south to north, heading towards the real threat that nobody's really aware of yet except John and the people in the north. So anyway guys, let me know what you think. As usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon, and a huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokestream producers, Hollis Griffin, Vol Guy 10, La La Gig, Kisa Powell, Marilyn Bentley, Mark Joseph, aka The Snow and Winterfell, Joanna, Sean Hayes, Doc Holliday, and Anonymous. Thank you guys so much. And also to my other Patreon producers who are listed in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Be sure to click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. Otherwise, random people are notified even if you're already subscribed. So be sure to click that bell. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.